This episode of News Dump is brought to you by Vincero. And more about them later, but first, it's time for the dump. Yeah. Hollywood needs to stop all productions and probably remove everything from the upcoming release schedule because much like the animal it's based off of, the greatest cinematic adventure that will ever grace the silver screen just nonchalantly sauntered directly in front of us without even stopping to embrace the love and affection that we all obviously have for it. And we're talking about Cats, the new live action theatrical version of the musical uh, that was, it's by Andrew Lloyd Webber, but the original uh, screenplay slash story is T.S. Eliot. It's not, that it's, spelled like your name too, by the way. T.S. Eliot was long dead. I, I looked into this. I was like, what? He wrote Cats? Like, no, he wrote a fucking book in like the 1920s for his like kids that they later published. And Andrew Lloyd Webber's like, ha, 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 yes. Yeah, so I'm going to take all this and make a weird fucking furry play out of it. Well, good. Andrew Lloyd Webber is uh, a weird person and has created a lot of great things. He is a very weird person. Created. But- also, kind of a genius. He made his first plays when he was like 19. Yeah, he does with stories to musicals as Disney does to fables to cartoons. Yes, yes. Anyways. Yeah, so you wanted excitement this holiday season? You got it, bucko. You wanted more furry representation in Hollywood? You, you, you got it. Yeah. You were the one that asked. You yeah. were tired of animals in movies looking too realistic and wanted them to be able to better portray human emotions? You got it. I saw you post about it, yeah. and you know what? You got it. Mm-hmm. You wanted to see some of Hollywood's biggest stars looking absolutely goddamn ridiculous? There you go. You got it. Because mm-hmm. during all of the totally boring Comic-Con news about superheroes, cartoons, action and horror franchise, only the debut of Cats the Movie could swoop in and take all the wind out of everyone's marketing campaigns, leaving them all to ask the question, why didn't we think of this first? It's perfect. Yeah. Think about all those millions of dollars just flushed down the drain because Cats had to debut their trailer the day that Comic-Con started. Yeah. Now, okay, in all seriousness, this movie looks completely absurd. I am uncomfortable with it. It looks like it was made using tech from 20 years ago. And honestly, when I first saw the clips circulating on Twitter, I didn't think this was an actual movie that would be released in theaters. I thought instead it was one of those yearly musical productions that airs on NBC or whatever. Before I saw the actual trailer, I saw screenshots floating around, and I thought that these screenshots were like photoshops that Twitter users had made to like make it look ridiculous. I 100% thought it was like an NBC Thanksgiving primetime special, but I am excited for the porno parody Pussies that will inevitably come out. So, uh, right. bada right. boom on that. Yeah. Uh, anyways, the fact that this is an actual movie that's being released, it's kind of awesome in ways that I can't even really explain. Yeah. I don't really, I can't quantify why this makes me happy. Maybe I am secretly a furry, yif yif. Uh, and yeah, again, it will either do wonders for or wreak havoc on the furry community, yeah. depending on your thoughts on this whole thing. Uh, might inspire some new uh, feelings in people that they hadn't had otherwise. It's going to bring way too many normies into the scene. It's going to ruin it. And by the way, uh, this movie has the same release date as Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker. Uh, Ambitious. It's like the people behind it didn't even care about the obvious crossover appeal between the two films. But at the very least, there will be something for the people protesting Star Wars to enjoy in theaters this holiday season. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Now, it's obviously fair to assume that we have no idea what we're talking about when it comes to cats. I mean, Ricky owns two actual cats, but that's basically the extent of our collective knowledge on the subject Mm -hmm. of cats. So instead of just allowing ourselves and you, the viewer, to remain confused about all this, we called up an expert to explain a few things about this massive blockbuster property. Thank you for joining us, Joel. Hi. Yes. It's good to be here. All right, now, Joel, before we jump into the big trailer reveal, what the hell is Cats, and what is it about? And please don't ramble. Yeah, Cats is a um, musical written by uh, Andrew Lloyd Webber and based on the book Old Possum's Book of Practical Cats by T.S. Eliot, uh, which is an anthology of poems. Uh, And the plot of it is that once a year, all the cats get together and they select a cat in ritual sacrifice to die and ascend to their version of heaven, which they call the heavy side layer. And then I assume because they're cats, they get reincarnated and so they have lots of different lives and, and once a year, one cat gets to do that. So are there humans and cats? No, there are only cats and cats. The only humans are in the audience. Is this a world where it's only cats that live in it or is this a human world 
What's going on there? Oh, no, no. They, they live in a human world, and humans are referenced in the songs, but there are no humans in the show. So are the cats always small? The cats are cat-sized. Uh, in the musical, they're on stage, and the, this, the version, I've seen three different productions of it, and it's always in like a junkyard or like a, like a street sort of cool urban street set junkyard. And so a lot of the props are human size. The cats seem small in relation. And at the end of every version I've seen, the cat that is selected to go to the heavy side layer gets into a tire and like, it looks like a flying saucer and goes up, but, but it's, a, the cat is inside the tire. Yeah. The cats are small. The cat's cat size, but it's weird because they're humans. They don't have cat proportions, you know? Uh, what do you think of the trailer, and, and does it accurately represent the musical? Yeah, the, the musical's fucking insane, and the trailer's insane, and, like, I, I don't love Cats. I think it's fine. There's some okay numbers in it. Um, but I like that the, the the movie's not trying to be anything that the show is not, which is bonkers humans dancing around pretending to be cats. That is what the show is. That is what the trailer is. I'm into it. What do you think about these CGI cats, Joel? Uh, part of me thinks it's an abomination and should be smitten from the face of the earth. The other part of me, is, it's very, like the show, they're in like leotards and there's like cat makeup and they have weird hair. And the CGI just makes them simultaneously more cat-like, but because it's not theatrical, it's CGI, it makes them less cat-like. It's very strange. Um, but again, like it embraces the insanity that is the show, which doesn't make a ton of like the show doesn't make a ton of sense. It's a cocaine fueled 1980s nightmare. And that's what the CGI looks like into it. Why do you think now is the right time for a Cats movie? Why this? Why now? I would argue that it is one of the most successful shows on the face of the planet. There's never a bad time for a Cats movie. Do I think that there are other Andrew Lloyd Webber vehicles that would be more interesting to watch, yes. But hey, I'm gonna do some psychedelics and go watch Cats and it's gonna be rad. Is there a problem releasing it on the same day as Star Wars? No, I think there's a lot of crossover audience there. When you look at the characters in Star Wars and you look at the characters in Cats, they're very similar. Star Wars has a large, furry, walking around, hugging, emotive, character in Chewbacca. And if you think about it, all of cats, they're all kinds of different types of Chewbaccas. Wookiees. I, I'm going to get fucking railed in the comments. They're fucking Wookiees. I know they're Wookiees. All right. Yeah, no, it's a fucking, it's a, ter no, it's a terrible idea. No, hang on. It's a terrible idea. It's, it's, it's terrible. It's dumb. Like, I get it. It's Christmas. Like, maybe the idea is that family counter programming to Star Wars, but Star Wars is a family franchise. Like, wait a week and put cats out. Win a week. You're never going to win that week. You're not going to win that week. All right. Well, is there anything else you'd like to add about this surprise reveal? Uh, some of us who are in the Broadway know or are aware that there was a Cats movie in production for some time, Ricky. Um, so it wasn't a surprise reveal. I would say, um, you know, give it a shot. People are such... Here's what I'll say. People are such assholes about... Oh, it looks weird. Oh, I don't want to go see something that looks weird. Avatar took itself super seriously. Cats is a show about singing and dancing cats who are participating in ritualistic sacrifice to get reincarnated. Like, it's not going to take itself seriously. It's a weird show. Embrace the weirdness. Don't complain about how weird the cats look. Don't complain about the furry sexiness of, I don't know, Taylor Swift cat, uh, whatever. Go see it, and I would say, again, like, get drunk. So, you know, have an edible. Have a good time. Get in there. Enjoy the cats. If anyone watching can offer you a job, what would you like to say to them, Joel? Uh, how much does it pay? I got a baby to support. No, I'm doing fine. Uh, I'm actually working. I just can't say what I'm working on yet, um, but I've been working for the last three months on um, the same project. It's just I can't say what it is. Wait. Are you working on Cats, the movie? <laughs> I am playing Buster for Jones. They, they're they pretending that it's James Corden, but it's really Joel Rubin. Anyways, thank you for joining us, Joel. Oh, wait, hold on. He has a, he has a question for me. Can I be your official uh, Broadway musical movie correspondent for internet today? Yes, absolutely. I, yeah, there's you, no other person I could think. You, you got the job, Joel. Mm -hmm. I know you're unemployed, so 
happy to help. Mm -hmm. Anyway, yeah, thanks for explaining everything for us, Joel, yeah. and allowing us and everyone else to prepare for the cinematic event of the century, clearly. But speaking of exceptional achievements in entertainment, the nominations for the 71st annual Emmy Awards were released this past week, and obviously we can go over everything, but that would just be a huge waste of time. Yeah. So instead, we'll just go over some of the bigger categories and then let you all fight it out in the comments over who and what should win. All right, well, let's start with Best Drama Series. Better Call Saul, Bodyguard, Game of Thrones, Killing Eve, Ozark, Pose, Succession, This Is Us. I didn't even know a show called Bodyguard existed. Or Pose. And I uh, uh, can't believe Game of Thrones is nominated after the shit show of the, you know, the, the last couple episodes. They got a lot of nominations, and there's going to be a lot of... Uh, it's going to be a real fun night on Twitter if they win any of them. Yeah. Uh, I really haven't seen any of these except for Better Call Saul. Yeah, I've only watched Game of Thrones. And, so, uh, yeah, cool. Ag again, <laughs> you, this is up to you in the comments to fight out who the winners of these are, because... Uh, my experience in a lot of these shows is very limited, but uh, let's move on to the next category. Best comedy series. Now, this is a stacked category. Mm -hmm. You got Barry, Fleabag, The Good Place, The Marvelous Miss Maisel, Russian Doll, Schitt's Creek, and Veep. Now, here's my thing is, it sucks that Barry is in the comedy category. Well, that's the problem with living in, like, like today's trend in comedy, uh, for the last couple of years at least, is, like, dramedies essentially mm -hmm. like because like I I didn't watch all of Fleabag but my wife watched a lot of it and I was in the room for it and, like that's another like very fucking dark show that's also very funny yeah um, because I'd love for Barry to win a huge uh, uh, title like this but it's hard when it's against stuff like The Good Place which is amazing and and a show that I just started watching this week Shit's Creek which is fucking amazing I watched the pilot and it felt very piloty and I didn't go beyond that oh it's it it, it <laughs> Not even that you have to stick with it past one, like, oh, wait till the third season or whatever. Yeah. Uh, it gets really good really quick. Uh, it's a very, very funny show. I've been enjoying myself very much. I mean, I like the cast yeah. a lot. It just didn't, it didn't hook me in the first episode. It's very uh, Arrested Development vibe in the first yeah. episode, but uh, it, it, it gets better, and I really do enjoy it. Yeah. So that's a tough one as I mean, well. Barry should get all the awards just for episode, was it episode six? The one with the, uh, the one-shot fight scene? Yeah, yeah. That alone deserves all the awards. Hilarious. Uh, uh, best limited series, you got Chernobyl, uh, Escape at Danimora, Fosse, Verdon, Sharp Objects, and When They See Us. Obviously, uh, Chernobyl. Yeah, I've only watched that. Chernobyl. I, I need to get around to When They See Us. And the rest of those I'd never heard of. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, Chernobyl, I mean, it's the only one I've seen, but I, I think it's worthy of awards. Give Barry and Chernobyl all the awards. Yeah, the rest uh, of these shows, they're not great, not terrible. They exist. Yeah. <laughs> now, obviously, there's a hell of a lot more categories that you can check out if you're interested in them. Links are always available down in the description below. But before we get into a crazy story about lies, deception, theft, and sex that's been bubbling up in Hollywood over the past few years, it's time, time, for a word from this week's sponsor, Vincero. Vincero has a modern and contemporary style that looks bold and professional. Get the watch built for a boss. It's time to step your game up and stand out. A luxury watch doesn't have to cost you a fortune, and you'll see why when you check out Vincero. Every watch is manufactured and quality checked by hand before it's being shipped out to you, the customer. This kind of attention to detail and dedication to quality, typically only seen in luxury watch brands, that, that could cost you over $500. Too much. Well, guess what? Vincero watches start at a little over $100. Affordable. Yeah. Uh, I love this watch. Uh, it's my everyday carry, mm -hmm. along with my gun and, uh, you know, my MREs. I take it out there. Anything can happen, and you're going to want to know what time it is. I wore my very fancy one today, which is the one that I got married in. Yeah. So if it's good enough for my marriage, it's good enough for you. <laughs> with over 14,000 five-star reviews and a two-year warranty, you can shop with confidence. Go take a look at these Vincero watches. We know that you'll love them as much as we do. Head to vincerowatches.com slash ND and enter the promo code NEWSDUMP to get 15% off your entire order. Don't blend in, stand out. Mm -hmm. Again, get your Vincero watch at vincerowatches.com slash ND with promo code NEWSDUMP. Yep. Now back to the news and uh, now to take a break from cats and awards, uh, which cats will obviously win a lot of. I mean, it's clearly Oscar bait. Yeah. Uh, we're going to move into a story about some really fucking weird behind the scenes Hollywood shit before dumping some Comic-Con stuff all over you. 
Uh, starting way back in 2013, a scam arose, which aimed to, and was apparently very successful at, luring top Hollywood talent overseas with the promise of work on major motion pictures, only to then siphon off money and leave them high and dry. It also goes a bit deeper than that and into some weird sexual territory. We'll get into that, but first let's expa explain what this long-running scam is and why it's finally coming to light. Recently, the FBI started a website for victims of a scam perpetrated by someone that they're calling the Con Queen of Hollywood. The woman, and you would assume a network of people helping to make this whole scam possible, are operating out of Indonesia, where she impersonated top executives from movie studios like Amy Pascal from Sony, Kathleen Kennedy of Disney Lucasfilm, and Stacey Snyder of 20th Century Fox, using fake emails promising these production people jobs on upcoming movies. She would then use different voices to impersonate these executives during long phone calls with her marks. Yeah, so the victims, which reportedly number into the hundreds, they would travel to Indonesia and then front all of their own money on standard things that are usually needed for international productions and travel in general, you know, food, transportation, translators, and this was all under the promise that they would be reimbursed. And if you've done any kind of freelance or contract work in your life, you'll know that a lot of the times this is completely standard practice. Yeah. So it's not really that strange to front some money because you know that you'll eventually be paid back for it. It's how specifically the production industry works a lot of the time. Obviously, these people were never paid back and the woman behind it was doing it all at a scale uh, that she was able to steal money from people that escalated to the hundreds of thousands of dollars. So and That'll go a long way in Indonesia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's safe to assume that this scam should be obvious to the ones who got duped, but in the original reporting on this con about a year ago from The Hollywood Reporter, they interviewed people who had fallen victim to it, and according to one of them, when they spoke on the phone, Pascal flattered them. She was enthused about his still photography, which she knew intimately. She was also familiar with details of his corporate clients, specific personality quirks of people with whom he'd worked closely. Quote, you wouldn't know these things unless you dealt with these people in very specific ways, he says now. This gave her immediate credibility. And uh, yeah, that's like... It's a deep dive for a scam. Yeah. Uh, when like someone called me up and started telling me things about like people I know personally, I'm like, okay, they, they probably, they're probably legit. Yeah. Uh, so when this news first broke, the studios and executives who were being impersonated either hired uh, private security firms or worked with security internally at the studios to get answers and hopefully stop what was going on. Uh, but the scam, it has continued well into this year, and that led to uh, now, which is when the FBI has officially announced their involvement in the case. Recently, in an updated story from the same source, it came to the light that not only were people like Victoria Alonzo, who is executive VP of production at Marvel, and Sarah Finn, a casting director who's worked on multiple blockbusters, even alongside Marvel, uh, they were also being impersonated and having their identities used for the scam. But also that the con queen was having intimate, sexually explicit phone auditions with actors. And nobody really knows why, because there was no money exchanging hands for this portion of the scam. They weren't making money off of it. Mm -hmm. But I mean, to us, it sounds like pretty cut and dry blackmail material to hold over these actors' heads should they ever make it big. And that's yeah. when you get the money. Yeah. First you get the blackmail, and then you get the money. Then you get the pussy. <laughs> no, you're talking you, about cats. Oh, okay, nothing, nothing, nothing cats sexual. Can, yeah. Then you get the cats. The greatest We're filming cats time. in Indonesia. Please come. Uh, oh, no. Yeah. Uh, one example of this blackmail was a call that an actor received from the woman impersonating Sarah Finn. During the call, the con queen urged the actor to engage in sexually explicit role play in order to convince her that he had the necessary acting chops. <laughs> he played along to a point until the conversation became too uncomfortable and weird. In the wake of calls uh. like this one and, and fake emails, uh, Disney obviously caught wind. They're like the world police. Mm -hmm. And through their investigation, they had to tell the women who were being impersonated what was happening. And despite knowing that they weren't involved, uh, they still apparently had to double check just to make sure. Yeah. Uh, Victoria Alonzo was quoted as saying, Disney never said we think you did this. They just said we need to corroborate that you didn't. Adding, people need to understand that this is not what Marvel or I would ever do. It's a horrible, horrible thing. I've had an unimpeachable 30-year career. That somebody's claiming I have done these things, I've spent many, many sleepless nights crying into my money. Well, also, yeah, no, Disney, I wasn't having phone sex with a bunch of young yeah. actors. 
Listen, man. Well, just, it's the perfect cover. We leave no stone unturned. The real conspiracy is that all of these top Hollywood executives cooked up a con queen in Indonesia to cover yeah, all the tracks. Yeah, Indonesia is the cover. Yeah. How do we even know there is an Indonesia? Well, the, the investigation is still ongoing, and like we said, only a few of the people that got conned have come forward on record to give their stories and explain exactly what happened to them. But the number of potential victims is reportedly into the hundreds, and it continues to grow. So uh, if for some reason you're in production and watching our show, be aware. And be wary of taking a job overseas, especially if the shoot is based in Indonesia. Yeah. Bali's lovely. The Australians love it. But uh, just, you know, temper your expectations. Yeah. Double check where that email's coming from. Maybe in a roundabout way, contact someone who might be in contact with these people. Were they like spoofing email addresses? So that's what's weird about it too, is because this was happening before, during, and after the Sony hack. Oh, so this has been going for like five years? Yeah, it's been going for a while. Oh, so uh, yeah, but the Sony hack was actually used uh, when it, when it in regards to Amy Pascal's non-involvement, the impersonation involvement of her, uh, the con queen was using her by saying, she wanted to rebuild her career with more uh, artistic films and wanted to do a bunch of documentaries yeah, in Southeast yeah. Asia. And anyways, the, the con woman, apparently very good. And The Hollywood Reporter has pretty much confirmed that all of the voices impersonated were all the same one woman. So great actress. I mean, you gotta, you gotta respect the hustle. Respect and, the grift. And uh, one more tip, don't have phone sex with casting agents unless you're really, really sure it's them. Or just don't at all. Yeah. At the very least, you know, do it on Skype where you got video. Yeah. And, yeah. and don't take your dick out. Don't do it. Ugh. Anyways, from con queens to the king of cons, Comic-Con is happening this weekend down in San Diego. And obviously there are a ton of trailers and clips that have been released or are releasing as we speak. But we can't show any of those to you. Sad. They'll take our money. Uh, here's what's out there, though. And then you can go in the description of this video to find the links to everything. Or just, you know... Put those typing skills to work up there in the, the, the fucking search bar, you lazy ass. Yeah. You can type. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a trailer for It too. Now, obviously, there's the trailer for Cats. We yeah. We spoke about that. There's a teaser trailer for uh, two new Halloween movies. Hell yeah. The Halloween, the franchise, not the... Well, it's both. Uh, and there's also an incredible trailer for the sequel of Top Gun, where Tom Cruise flies inside a goddamn fighter jet. It just gave me fucking... I, I hate... Up until the Top Gun trailer, and I'd see people be like, oh, I got goosebumps. I'm like, shut the fuck up. No, you didn't. But I, I think I got goosebumps watching Top Gun. It's very trailer. cool. And, and they're, they're very tap dancing around the, uh, like, they're saying everything's real in it. And I really did that. But the truth is, is that he was sitting in a passenger seat in a fighter jet with his own mock-up thing. But it looks really, really cool. I don't know. I feel, like, still, I feel like he might have fly, flown the jet. Maybe he did. Maybe we'll find out. <laughs> and I'll be eating crow. But uh, it is very nice. And it's still very, very cool to go for a ride in a fighter jet. Ba, ba, ba. It's a great soundtrack, too. Yeah. Uh, also, there's the first clip. This is the most important one, obviously, because we're on the internet. The first clip of Rick and Morty Season 4 uh, was released on Friday, and uh, that features Taika Waititi as an alien app developer. Mm. So it's uh, it's short but sweet. Oh, and uh, speaking of Ta Taika Waititi, uh, first the bad news. Obvious news, but still bad. Warner Brothers has officially delayed the live-action Akira movie that they'd been that he'd been working on, and they're not really sure when it's going to get off the ground. Mm. But they're that's, not that's sure of that. That's one I'm okay with them taking their time on. Yeah, but they're not sure of that because now here's the good news: he has to go work on Thor four instead, ah. where he's going to be writing and directing that film for Marvel, obviously. So while it sucks to wait and see just what the hell YTD is going to be able to do with Akira. At least we're safe now with the knowledge that Thor wasn't just a one-off gig for him, and he's pretty much in charge of the future of that character. Good for you, Taika. Which everyone should be happy about. Anyway, that's it for your weekly news dump. Mm -hmm. uh, if you haven't already, go listen to our exclusive Patreon podcast, which is ready for you to listen to. Just if, waiting If now. you're a Patreon subscriber at the $5 or more level or right. a YouTube member. Um, also, stay tuned for a new episode of Weekly Weird News and potentially... Something special, a little yeah. one-off thing of something that we've been really pulling some strings trying to put together. Mm -hmm. uh, that'll be coming. I'm not. I'm not gonna fucking jinx it by saying when it's coming, but soon. Yes, very, very uh, soon. In the meantime, watch our videos about uh, Face App and why you shouldn't download it, and Tech News Day, where a man flies through the air on a hoverboard with a big old gun. Yeah, pretty cool. Pretty cool. See you next time. Bye.